the independence will pass down. I said, which is why Peter's will be so different to mine. And it'd be so brilliant because it would bring a completely new idea. And hopefully with mine, there was a slightly different idea to David's or to Christopher's. Or what I love about Troughton was that mad face. I think he's just got such a doctrine face. Um, and two of the Cybermen, I, I still maintain, are the best Cybermen that we've ever had in the scariest. And, you know, I feel like we... I, I don't know if we ever really got those right. I mean, we did toward the end, but I just think those weird, like, cloth bodies that they have, and those amazing... I don't know if anyone's seen two of the Cybermen, some of the older fans have like some But, uh, that's... I would, if, if you've not seen it, it's a great Doctor Who episode to watch. All right, let's say... Hello. Hello, um, Clara. Uh, <laughs> um, can I have a hug? Can I have a hug? From here. Do you have a mama? If you could be any companion, uh, me. Which one would I be? Yeah. Oh, Frankie knows this. <laughs> That's a good question. Maybe Piper, because she's really hot. <laughs> I can't be Karen, she's too ginger and gallant. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and Jen is still the companion, so I don't want to take her job. Um, and K9! Yeah. K9! Yeah, robot talk, why not? What yeah. about Clara? Still not ginger! Still not ginger. 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 Uh, yeah, maybe, maybe Piper, because she gets to kiss David, there you go. <laughs> well, you, you, you brought up David in a very interesting way. Um, <laughs> what was it like working with him on the 50th anniversary? Because oh, I think I can speak for all of your fans, but that chemistry was just wonderful. Yeah, he's great, I love like him. He's so great. He's a good friend. And, um, you know, I, the thing with David that I still get is, I still go, whoa. It's Doctor Who. Because <laughs> I watched all of his episodes, you know, sort of when I got the job. It's really bad. Like, when I got this job, I'd never seen a whole episode of Doctor Who. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's true. It's true, I'm afraid. It's really true. I'd seen bits of it. Um, uh, and, then I, and, then I, and then I watched it all, and I sort of fell in love with it. Um, but yeah, he's fabulous. He's a, he's a wonderful man. On this side? Hi. Um, in honor of Karen not being here, I was wondering if I could take a selfie with you. That's up for this man, uh, Ted. Take a selfie? Yeah. Uh, sure, sure. Yeah. <laughs> we should get the yeah. friends in there. Yeah. It's so lovely. Yeah, you should buy my self-help. You know, uh, do you want to do it this way? No, no, no. Come on, get the selfish. Wow. Wow. I don't know. Are you ready? All right. Thank you. Thank you. Well, wow, nice. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Do you see a lot of tattoos? Have you seen your face? Yeah. On a new Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's yeah. that like? On a, well, you know what? <laughs> uh, we had a great night. Um, <laughs> It was a man and a woman, right? And the woman, it was a big tattoo of my face on her arm. Like, it covered her whole arm. And I just thought, the man must do this in the morning. Oh. Why am I looking at Matt Smith on my right arm? It's weird! Um, no, and actually I've signed a lot of people's, um, you know, arms and yeah. the bottom bits. <laughs> It's, that's cool, it's a cool thing. It's, it's, you know, the Hoovian universe is a bold one. Let's go over to this side, not to be a buzzkill, but if we could limit it to questions, it would be great. Hello? Hello? Um, I was... <laughs> what did you feel when um, you had to the show? leave the show? Oh, yeah, sad. Really sad. Um, it's a really hard show to leave. And now you watch it and go, why did I leave? <laughs> um, but I sort of felt like I had to, it was time and, and, and uh, 
Oh, I don't know. It was really tough. Like, there was a great idea for like he had a great idea, Stephen, for the next year. And it was really hard. I was like hearing it go. Oh God, no, damn. But um, yeah, it was it was really sad. I cried, and I, I'm not I'm not a crier. Um, I'm not a crier. <laughs> yeah. Bit like that. <laughs> Well, that final speech, I mean, it made me cry. I walked into our living room the other day and I saw my girlfriend Sam crying. I said, what's wrong? And I saw she was watching your final scene from the Christmas special. And that, that speech about always remembering when the doctor was you and about change, but remembering who you were, what was it like maybe in the, in the read-through when you read that for the first time? Oh, yeah, it was really hard. I was a bubbling mess. And, you know, that Stephen's brilliant writing. He's so... You know, and I think Stephen really understood my doctor. Because me, Stephen, Karen and Arthur, and, and the, the producer peers, we, we really had to be a team because Russell and David and Judy Gardner were so popular. And when we came in, everyone was going, go on then. And they didn't even know after our first season if they were going to make another episode, um, if they were going to make another season of Doctor Who, you know? Uh, which is unthinkable naturally, really. So we just became such close friends. The side, hello. Sorry. I'm Patrick Chapman. Yeah, Patrick Chapman. You look good. Yeah. Um, I was wondering, due yeah. to something Sylvester McCoy did at Dragon Con, he read um, your Pandorica speech. So um, I was wondering if you could maybe um, read um, a Short, um, it's three sentences speech from the, um, from his doctor, as the other doctor. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. I've got to put my glasses on, though. <laughs> Just carry them around. Okay. Yeah. Say. There are worlds out there where the sky is burning and the seas sleep and the river. Oh wow, this is really good. See, this is what we want. And the rivers dream, people made of smoke and cities made of song. Somewhere there's danger, somewhere there's injustice, and somewhere else the tea's getting cold. Come on, Ace, we've got work to do. Wow, cool. I'm going to check that out. Thank you for the tip. <laughs> that was the final line of Sylvester McCoy, by the way, if you didn't, if you didn't hear that. It's really cool. Yeah. Hello. Hi there. Um, Hi. One, I have two questions, if that's okay. First one's short. Is it okay? Go for it. One, can I be your companion? Yes. <laughs> one, two. Also, my second question is, what's your favorite quote from the 11th? Or every doctor in general. From any doctor ever. And oh. the eleventh doctor. Oh, by me, that's a tough one. Um, ooh, I mean, there's so many good ones, aren't there? You know, because you've got like, my guys are cool. <laughs> Which they are. I like anywhere, all of time and space. Uh, oh, uh, in the episode in the eleventh hour, I like. Um, Geronimo! Maybe it's Geronimo, right? Yeah, yeah. And that sort of came about. That, that was never meant to be, like, a catchphrase. Really? No. We, we, we said it once in the first episode, and then I just started, like, popping it on the end of scenes. <laughs> and, uh, and Steve was like, oh, cool, okay, we'll start writing it, and then it just all happened. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe one of them. That was a really rubbish answer, wasn't it? But, uh, yeah. Or, or Fez is a cool, just because I was obsessed with the Fez. And that's why, yeah, that's why Stephen kept blowing it up, because I kept asking for it. And actually, you know, the Fez has become a thing, and, and um, I didn't really wear the Fez that much. I get it, and he'd go like... Tup, tup. You don't know, want to wear it more? Like, yeah, I wanted to wear it. I kept asking for a hat, so then he gave me a Fez. <laughs> And then when I read, and thinking I wouldn't like the Fez, and then I loved the Fez, and then it was like, well, I'm gonna put, like, all, Stephen would literally go, I'd go, oh, I've got grey hairs. And there's an episode where he's like, I've got seven grey hairs. 
That's because I said it. And, uh, the chin gags, you just hear my friends go, shut up, Smithy, you've got a big chin. In it goes. Uh, nothing is safe with Stephen Moffat. Awesome. All right, let's say hello. Hi. Uh, my wife was a little shy to ask this question, but uh, she was browsing Netflix and came across a movie called Woo. Yeah. I was wondering how it was like to shoot that movie. Oh, that's a cool question. Also, I like your hat. Um, yeah, it was cool. We shot on the north coast of Germany. Um, and on, on my first day on set, I was appalling, actually. Naked, you know, I have to run into the sea. <laughs> And this, I'm telling you, man, that sea up in north of Germany in March is cold. <laughs> but then you've got to come out and do a scene with someone, so you can imagine. <laughs> it's a funny introduction. Um, uh, but it was, yeah, it was cool. It's quite a mad film. Uh, but he, it was this, this cool Hungarian guy called Benedict Friedauf. Um, so, yeah, I had fun making that movie. Well, in terms of the other non Doctor Who work you've done, I was really stoked when you were cast in Ryan Gosling's film, but then I think when we all found out you were going to be in Terminator Genesis, we let out a collective woo. Yeah, it should be good, right? <laughs> well, obviously, it's, it's under secrecy, but directed by Alan Taylor from Game of Thrones and the second Thor film, wonderful director. Is there anything you can tell us about it or about your role? Uh, not really, just that I'm sort of linked to John Connor, I can say that much really, but it's not, you know, it's all like, everything's a secret. I've got that, they sort of impart on the chip when you talk about <laughs> your ears explode. Um, so, you no. Know. Has it been nice working with Alan Taylor? Yeah, yeah, I mean, it was, you know, <clears throat> uh, I, I, I've like finished my, my sort of time on the film now, and, and uh, I think they're cutting it together, so it comes out in July, which we'll see. Oh, awesome. Um, uh, I'm a big fan of the relationship between um, the Doctor and River, and I was just wondering, yeah. I was just wondering what it was like to work with Alex Kingston. Oh, she's an absolute dream. She's everything you want her to be, literally. The most sensational fur on the planet is <laughs> there's just no one better. And if she goes and appears with Capaldi, I will bang the tables with my fists. <laughs> Um, no, it's just, I like to think that Eleven and River have a particularly special relationship. And me and Alex, she was so great to me. She was so, she was such a good friend and really helped me through it. And really, like me, Karen, I'll never forget it. We sat in this restaurant in Cardiff Bay called Woods. Which if, if you're ever in Cardiff, go to Woods. If you ever go to the experience, I think it's really nice. And we, and we were sat at dinner and, um, this was before we really filmed anything, and she looked at me and Karen, who were like this like, green little thing, and she was like, you two have no idea what's gonna happen to you. We were like, what, what do you mean? She's like, you just got like, she's like, you won't be able to walk around in this place. We were like, we could do whatever we want. We were like, oh, we'll be fine, you know. And she just, she just really, you know, gave us good advice and was kind, and she was very motherly and maternal, and sexy. <laughs> In terms of the pandemonium around the show, obviously it's been big since 1963 in the UK, but you know, I think if Christopher Eccleston and David Tennant started to build that bridge to North America, yeah. you finished the bridge in a big way and really brought it across the pond. Was there a moment when you really knew that it was connecting on a different continent? Oh, ooh, yeah. That's a good question, actually. Yeah, there really was. We went, me and Karen and Arthur went to a screening in New York at this theater in the East Village. And um, people say, what's your favorite experience outside of the show? And often we quote that, because A, that trip in New York was just madness, and we stayed up all night and drank until we couldn't walk. <laughs> I'm not advocating that. You want any day to play some more? Consult the parents. Yes, Canada. <laughs> yeah, man. 21, what's that all about? <laughs> what, you think you can drive at 16? Are you kidding me? Um, 18. In Quebec, it's 18. Oh, yeah. Um, 18 in Australia. Okay, yeah, I know. Right? You want to go shoot some kangaroos? Um, uh, not that I advocate the shooting of kangaroos. Uh, a, a lovely wild animal that we want to preserve. Wombats, on the other hand. Um, 
Yeah. No, what was I saying? I was answering the question, wasn't I? Ah, Ruth Allen. Yes. So we were in the screening in New York, and we were like, and it was going, it was, what's the 11th hour? And they went nuts. And we were like, whoa. People in America like it. People in New York like it. And then we went and did all this press, and we did press here. And we said, it was just, it was like this snowball over the three years. It was, uh, yeah, it was an amazing thing to be part of, actually. Um, and it's uh, something I'm very proud of. That, 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 you know, and I, I know that Karen and Arthur are too. So yeah, there, there was a real moment. That moment in New York was a really, was an amazing thing. Well, yes, sir. Hi. Uh, Hi. Uh, I Hi. have a question about uh, another movie we're on called Christopher and His Kind. Yes. Uh, when they told you the premise of what the film was going to be, uh, like, you're going to be playing this rich, well, uh, well-educated guy in yeah. Germany, trying to hook up with as many guys as you can. Yeah. What went through your head right there? Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, hey, you know, it's, uh, look, that's one of the cool things of being an actor that you get to experience completely different things, and you get to learn different things. In this case. I got to learn that stubble is a horrible thing to kiss. <laughs> let me tell you guys, when you want to complain about stubble rash and all that, it is true. Um, and uh, yeah, I, 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 you know, I'm the sort of actor that just sort of jumps into stuff. So, uh, and it was a great script, and, and he's a wonderful writer. And, and it, was a, uh, it was written by a guy called Kevin Elliott, who is a, a wonderful playwright in England. And so I was, I was really into the idea of doing it, and then, and then I learned to hate stubble. <laughs> You're rocking some good stubble now, though. Oh yeah, I just I can't find any shaving foam. Literally, I was like, I've got to buy some shaving foam for the past few days. Today, I'm buying some shaving foam. <laughs> <laughs> well, the time's gone quick. We do have to wrap it up in a few minutes. Um, but uh, let's take one uh, question from this side. Yeah. Right, Gordon, we'll go for our last question over on this side. So, uh, you have Ooh. the second last question. Hello. Hi. What's your favorite... <laughs> What's your favorite bad guy? My favorite bad guy? Oh, that's a good question. It's the Weeping Angel. Yeah. 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 I think... Yeah. The minor, they, they, they the footprint. I think them, or the silence. And I, put, I kind of liked it at, at the end, that the silence and the doctor were just like rocking out together. <laughs> Well, what are those uh, shooting the Weeping Angel scenes though? Because we see them, and yeah. the Weeping Angel is coming close to you, it's terrifying. Oh, I imagine you have to stop, and then a production assistant comes in and moves it. How does that work? Well, it's, it's these poor dancers who are painted, and it's this, this thing called Pax Paint, which is awful to get off. It's, it's, it's basically glue and paint, and, they, it's these, and they're these huge things. Their eyelids are sealed over, it's really uncomfortable, and it's this, they go, boom. Stay there, because obviously we're going, the doctor's there going, oh, I'm there, I'm there, I'm there, I'm there. I'm still going to keep talking, because there's a lot of narrative to tell you, and in four pages time, you need to understand this. <laughs> and these poor people are like this, you know, so, um, yeah, and they're, um, well, uh, yeah, so it's, it's, um, these lovely dancers that come in and work with your home. Max I love you! Oh, Dave from Canada, whose name I don't know, I love you too! <laughs> on set in Wales a, a few years ago. I had the pleasure of visiting the set. Yes. Tons of secrecy there. I think they still have my DNA. Yeah. It's getting to visit. Pretty uh, much. Yeah, but why does this show go for 50 years? Why does it become the big phenomenon it has? What, what is that key ingredient to Doctor Who? That's a good question. Uh, well, I think it's two things. I think one, the basic premise is a, 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 some sort of lunatic you can go anywhere in time or space. You're not bound by genre, you're not bound by form, you're not bound, bound by where you can take that story or how you can tell that story. Added to that, he picks up a hot chick, takes him with her. <laughs> Added to that, you know, and so the basic format of the show as a television format has longevity and is brilliant. And I think, I think it's cultivated a fandom and, 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 and a community of fans that are really dedicated and really loyal and support it, and I think together those two elements are why we are all here in this room, you know. Um, You're pretty awesome too, just that point. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, last question. Hello, 
sir. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Um, just before I ask my, my question, this is something I have to do now that there's a doctor on the stage. So, uh, knock, knock. Who's there? <laughs> doctor. Doctor who? <laughs> Crazy, funny <laughs> <laughs> um, my, my, perfect, my question is, is, as well as appearing on Doctor Who, you also appeared on an episode of the Sarah Jane Adventure. Yes. Um, what was it like working with the late great Elizabeth Slane, and did it feel weird doing the 50th anniversary not having her have a part of it? Uh, well, she was a, a wonderful lady. Yeah. Um, and she was cool, you know, she really cool and had a, and uh, you know, uh, uh, actually in a similar way that Alex does, they both have a real spirit of youth about them. Um, and Liz really had that and it was, that was such a tragedy for, you know, to everyone associated with Doctor Who really because she was, she was a really seminal companion, I think. Um, yeah, you know, not having her around to, to be part of the figure was a shame. Um, because, you know, we lost not only a friend, but I think, I think a great part of the community in Doctor Who, so, yeah, it was a sad day losing this, but, um, yeah. Luke, I have a quick question. First part, uh, it's not actually for you, if that's okay. I have a gift to give. Is there an analyst that you need to buy? Alright, Seth. There she is. Can you go? Oh. Uh oh. <laughs> so she really doesn't like big crowds. <laughs> but I think here in the theater, this should be okay. So I think it's a tennis box in. I have a good question. Uh, I don't know if some of you guys yet. Sweet Mary. Happy marriage. <laughs> 